Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna see how we can build and train a neural network with nothing but JavaScript using Brain.js. So machine learning and AI is like an exciting side of software development. And even though there have been many programming languages, scripts and tools out there to train and build a neural network, usually they are either written in Python or R. So if you're a friend and developer or someone who just works with JavaScript and wondering if there's a way you can use JavaScript in order to get a taste of machine learning? The answer is yes, and this is where Brain.js comes in. Brain.js is an easy to use JavaScript library, which is used to train and build a neural network by hiding all this uh, mathematical complexity behind it. Okay, a few things first. Uh, from now on, I'm gonna use the word DNN instead of deep neural networks. And second, in this video, we are not gonna do any hands-on coding, but uh, we will go through the code of our number generator and explain how it works and see how we can use a pre-built DNN in order to train and work with our number generator. And third, uh, links to all the code repositories will be in the description below. After you have cloned the repo, open the number evaluator.html file in the browser of your choice. I have opened up all the downloaded files in VS Code so I can use the go live feature in order for it to open in my default browser. Once it loads up, you should see a grid on your UI. This is the UI for a number prediction application that uses a DNN to guess what you have drawn in its grid. Uh, if you try drawing a number in the grid, it can be any value from 0 to 9 but only one digit. Uh, you draw numbers by clicking a square in the grid, holding down your left mouse key and dragging it around releasing when done. After you have drawn something, click the get assessment button. Doing so will give you an assessment uh, which tells you what is the confidence level of the number you have drawn. To make another prediction, click the clear input button and draw another number in the grid, then click get assessment again. So in step two, we are going to implement a DNN in JavaScript with the brain.js library. We are now going to walk through the code so you can see what implementing a DNN in JavaScript with the brain.js library looks like. When we click the get assessment button, we can see that it invokes a function called get assessment. When we scroll farther down in the number evaluator.html file, we can see the definition of get assessment. The get assessment method or function is something we created so our UI can talk to the DNN object created by the brain.js library. The first thing we need to do if we want to use the DNN is acquire data about what we drew on the screen. We need to give our DNN something to examine. We do this with another function we have created for a demo called capture and transform input. This function in iterates over the grid on our web page and examines which boxes got colored and which did not. It then takes all of them and transforms the whole into an array of ones and zeros and returns that as the result. We need to perform this transformation because the DNN provided to us by the brain.js library will not know what to do with the raw data. Our DNN only knows how to process a list of ones and zeros. It cannot recognize the red color or any color on the HTML page. Now in step three, we are using a DNN to classify what we drew and determine its accuracy. All DNNs require an input vector to do their job. Even neural network examples you might have seen or maybe heard of uh, where they process photographs to determine if the photo contains a cat or dog don't work with the photos directly instead they use a script usually python which takes the pixel information from the photo and unspools it in, into a long list of values which are usually numbers representing different pieces of rgb value for each pixel in the photo the result is called an input vector and for a photo it may contain many values 
we are using something similar here uh, and we are using it using the operation with capture and transport input function when you use the brain.js library you create an object that holds information about your dnn one of the many phases of this object is a method called run and this is what actually generates the prediction that ultimately winds up on the web page we see the brain.js run method takes an input vector as an argument and returns a result. This result is a JSON payload that contains information about our DNN's educated guess about what number we drew. For our tutorial, we feed the run method the output of our capture and transport input function. This function takes in prediction data, which is result to convert, as an argument and creates a new array which is array to return and that has information we can use to display a, as a result in the ui the output returned by our dnn will be an object that has 10 properties which ranges from numbers 0 to 9 each of them with a probability between 0 to 1 and map to it so for example a prediction payload for our dnn the result to convert parameter might look like this we use this output to build a new array in which each item has a label property, a likelihood property which stores the probability received from the neural network for that item, a top choice property which we calculate and an ordinal property which we assign values to like 0, 1 or 2 to 9. We sort our array by likelihood to determine the DNN's top pick, then use this information to mark that item's top choice property with either a 1 or 0. And as a last step, we feed this into a final function, array.html, which wraps this information in HTML tags. This function performs to determine if its top choice property is 1, and if it is, it wraps the item in yellow colored markup. This is the highlighting we see on the website, web page. So the next step is to train the data and neural network. If we peek inside our get training data function, we can see exactly what our DNN is using to learn. In the input portion of the payload, we are providing lots of ones and zeros. This big list of ones and zeros is what our drawing of a number looks like after it's been processed by our app's code. We are telling the brain.js DNN that this is the shape of the input data it should expect and learn to process. And if you look further down, we can see an output section which contains 10 properties, one for each of the possible one digit numbers that the network might provide. But remember that this is training data so we are indicating by marking the zero property to one on this particular record and that the big list of ones and zeros in the input property represents a zero to us as humans. Now you might be wondering where all the training data in the get training data function came from. So there is a file called training data recorder.html in the repo. If you open it up in your code editor and go live, you can see this UI in your favorite browser. The file uses a grid similar to one in the number evaluator.html file, except this one is used for creating training samples. That means it does not talk to the DNN directly, but we are creating training samples. So you can draw a number on the grid, categorize what you just drew. You can do this by clicking one of the radio buttons beneath the grid. If you're adding a training example of four, you have to choose radio button for four. Selecting a category will enable the record input button. And then you can click the record input button and doing this will create an entry in the text box at the bottom formatted in such a way as it is useful to the DNN. Click the copy data button to copy whatever in the text box to your clipboard. Once you have done this, you can paste this entry into the get training data function in the number evaluator.html file. So this was a simple implementation of how you can use a library like brain.js in order to get started with machine learning and AI. Usually an implementation like this requires you to know or use at least one of the Python libraries like TensorFlow, PyTorch, or Keras. But uh, as a JavaScript developer, you can really get into anything you want by using one of these simple libraries. And if you guys enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this video where I explain uh, which programming languages you should consider in 2022 if you want to get into machine learning or AI. With that being said, uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Cheers.